This illusion is called Pyre Heavenward. The latter part is a reference to a musical project I did, which was called simply Heavenward. Also, a bit of my novel, Death with Pleasure, I've never mentioned it, <laughs> I am reluctant to mention it now, A Web I Wove. If you're new, illusions are what I call my paintings. It's only fitting, seeing as how I am scarred by illusion. On its knees and elbows, the figure crawls forward into the blank space of the canvas paper. In the process, the head is dragged along, lagging under the torso. With effort, the body postulates a prayer, clasping its hands together through its gaping torso. The ambition of the body is unrelenting. The pose conveys something dire and a longing for something spiritual. But with its pose, it, in a way, symbolic embodies what it desires whilst maintaining a tension or divide between the body and the head or mind. I had this concept sketch before I brought and read From Here to Eternity by Caitlin, the mortician of Ask a Mortician. I absolutely love that book. I share many of the same sentiments about death and dying that she expressed. It really touches on all my interests and could make for a great source book. Should I write again? I gave it 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I only wish I could have given it more and that I had read it sooner, specifically back when I was taking my English composition class in college. I don't remember the assignment's prompt, but I remember I chose to write about Elizabeth Kubler, I believe that's how you say her name, Kubler Ross's Five Stages of Grief. From Here to Eternity's cross-cultural accounts of death care and death rituals, I think, really supplement an answer to coping with grief and loss. It reminds me, but that's just how my mind works, everything reminds me of something, of Zora Neale Hurston's stance on segregation, her fear that in desegregation, the remnants of African culture in post-slavery America would be lost. From Here to Eternity echoes the loss of culture in modern death care and death ritual. A lot of laws, like, really inhibit the practice of things, how they used to be done, and it's, it's really odd, and it's all really for money. That's why they're like, you the title of this piece, Pyre, connects to the first story Caitlin recounts, Cremation by Funeral Pier. In the only place in the U.S. is permitted, which is Crestone, Colorado, but it's exclusive to the denizens of that town. But it also connects to my Vampire Chronicles playlist as well, which is called Pure Pier, because <laughs> I like puns. I think I'm a little clever. Um, that playlist opens with... Very fitting. Synchronicity. I love it. Paloma Face, Final Breath. It definitely could suffice for this painting soundtrack, that along with FK Twig's Holy Terrain, Beauty Remains, again by Paloma Faith, Sunlight by Hozier, and Mary the Night, Lady Gaga. I know those last two seem like they're conflicting, but they make sense to me, and if you listen to them and you kind of get this painting, you'll it, it'll make sense. <laughs> When I started From Here to Eternity, I was really looking forward to the Mexican portion and the sky burial portion. With the body breakers, I learned are called Roga, Rogiapa. I'm sorry, pronunciation is not my thing, even with English. Um, it wasn't mentioned at Frida Kahlo. Um, she's referred to as the Heroina del Dola. Her death, along with her unborn children's death, her ambiguous sense of loss, since there's nothing really conclusive on her feelings about children and motherhood itself. Her prominence in Mexico connected to the overarching grief that permeated the culture of Mexico, but that was only after the reclamation of their heritage post-Catholicism's reprogramming. Thus, disenfranchised people began recognizing figures like the female Santa Muerta, which I have a tarot card deck which I absolutely love. I love, I love so much. I'm like, oh, this is so my thing. I'm like, why didn't I have this sooner? It irks me to my soul. Um, <laughs> on the Day of the Dead, it turns out that they make and give out pan de muerto, bread of the dead. And I'm so curious about it. I had to Google some recipes. It is just bread, but bread of the dead, you know. And I'm inspired by it nonetheless. <laughs> Do not shit on my joy. Later in the book, I was enlightened with the Bolivians' death culture. It's very similar to Mexico with their, oof, pronunciation, I'm so sorry, Natishas? I didn't Google it. I should have Googled it. Meaning flat-nosed or pug nose, and that is just like what they call the, the skulls. It seems like they have um, 
the similar post Catholicism reclamation, the contingent between magic spiritualism versus religion. But I think with most people of color, organized religion was just the stripping of identity and the adoption of good Christian names, which superficially you could call it assimilation. I found the connection to Anne Rice's Vampire Chronicles with the All Saints Day, the reference of Claudia in the interview with a vampire where she attempts to murder Lestat. She has chrysanthemums, and when Louis sees her, he's like, oh, chrysanthemums mean death to Claudia, but it also means death to just, like, in general, All Saints Day symbolism. Mexicans have uh, marigolds, but they also do chrysanthemums. Bolivians, as it turns out, purple, that's considered the color of the dead. Additionally, the Italian call of the dead that mirrors the Bolivian skull worship reminded me of Anne Rice, specifically Armand, how he was the cult leader in Italy within the catacombs. They have... Pesalente, I don't know Italian, but that translates to poor little ones. And, you know, that adds to my Italian word archive, too, now. Because there's the, the puti, which are the true cherubs that aren't cherubs. Skull worship, or death worship, as Caitlin notes, is a very female thing. As it seems, religion oppresses women. Dachma, the Tower of Silence, which was introduced along with the Zoroastrianism, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I mistook it for like an unofficial sky burial, but no, they're similar but different. And it's done, I guess, by the descendants of Persians, so Iranians, you know. The parts in between were less engaging, although altogether they provided more to my language archive. I said before in a previous video that I have an interest in language and there's something about how it connects to the cultural values of the place that, I don't know, I find it's just really interesting. In the Japanese portion of the book, I learned the words kodukushi for lonely death, um, seppuku, seppuku, yeah, cutting of the abdomen, so that's just ritual suicide performed normally by samurais. Um, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I'm going to guess Yubatsut, when sons would abandon their elderly mothers to the forest in times of famine, and the women were to stay out there until they died um, as a sense of duty and or honor to their families. It also reminded me that whole portion of a book called Honolulu, in which a Korean woman moves to Hawaii and grieves with the people for their loss over their queen. Hawaii, if you didn't know, never wanted to be a state. Um, but the character, this woman from Korea who is in Hawaii, she shares with a native Hawaiian the word Han, which in Korean means to suffer and endure. Asian culture is really about that. You know, they're really, really about that selflessness, collectivist culture over the individualist culture, that's what it would be um, identified as within like psychology. America is very much individualist culture, so that's probably at least the psychological explanation of why suicide is so shunned, aside from, you know, religion, is individualist culture. Anyway, um, there was no mention of exiled dead people, like how they're how they're drawn in like a Christmas story where he depicts the, the people with the XE eyes, you know, with the you'll shoot your eye out. It was always odd to me because I'm like, what dead person did he see that looked like that? I've never seen a dead person look like that. I could ramble forever about this book and death and dying rituals and like the beauty of it all because ugh, it's so it's so beautiful. I love it. I'm like, oh, wrong time, wrong place, wrong time, wrong place, you know? Um, if you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on, so I will in my next video. Thank you for watching.